But now it looks like he's going to accomplish this damage already with a lot of Zerglings. He's going to take out this first little push force of Rubies, or maybe not, maybe. Yeah, he is going to clean it up, losing only a few Zerglings to Firebats. That Firebat has 10 kills. That's not a few, that's quite a bit. And Quanro also losing all but three of his Meatlisks that he brought over there. I don't know if that was all of his Meatlisks or just what he used to defend. But... Ruby does not have any M&M out on the field right now, while Quanro goes for this massive Meatless build. And I think he's, I think Quanro wants to expand to the 6 o'clock, there's the expansion. And this map is pretty easy, fairly easy to defendable expansions, I believe, I, I'm not sure, but I'm pretty sure I'm thinking of the right map here, and now Quanro's going to try and do something more with his Meatless. He could have done more, in my opinion, to get the SCVs as I've already mentioned, but now Ruby does have more than enough turrets on his mineral lines. But Quanro may as well just try and see what happens. Uh, I kind of, personally, I kind of wish he would stop making the list unless he's upgrading them, and they have the letter scrolling across the bottom, so I can't tell. I don't think he's upgraded at all, because he's throwing down the hydros down in the Evo chamber. But um, once the uh, Marines start getting their upgrades, the list just becomes so ineffective and so um, just cost ineffective that, that it's painful. And um, they start dying so quickly to the plus one attack, and... You really can't use the Mutalus later on, so I, I was kind of disappointed to see him produce that extra three or four Mutalus. I would have rather seen him maybe take another base. This is Tornado. There's a ton of expansions on the map. There's 12 bases, I believe, and every single one has a gas. You can go heavy, heavy macro. You're at cross position, so if Quanner was to go heavy macro, tech to that early hive, and um, use lur Lurkers early on to, to kind of defend and contain Ruby, and then tech to hive, get some of his uh, upper tech out, trying to race to defile, which I think that would probably be a really good spot for him. He's got a lot of room. He's got those Mutalus in the air to scout. Um, macro, macro, macro. That's the, the name of the game for this map. And um, I kind of wish Kawano would do it a little hardcore now. I wish he would do another one or two bases because I think that's uh, really where he's going to gain gain the advantage here. And uh, that was funny. Ruby just killed his own tank because it was blocked rather than lifting his factory to, to get it out. That was kind of weird. But um, I guess that works if you got to just kill the workers that aren't really there. We got some liquor eggs morphine in as well. And the Mutalist just continuing to scout, which is fine, but you notice that they're not doing any more damage. To do, to, to, this effectiveness, the same number of, uh, the same effectiveness could have been reached with three Mutalists instead of the eight or whatever he has right now, and he would have another base or so. So, uh, that's what I'm talking about with the, with the macro heaviness and how the Mutalists just aren't really doing anything right now, and both players are just macroing up, and, uh, yeah, kind of relaxing into kind of a, uh, slow, slower paced games right now as, uh, Ruby's just gonna bunker up and wait until he gets a nice M&M &M force to push out with later on here. Yeah, and I do think that Ruby does have the advantage here a little bit. He, I think he's got, a, he's been mining that natural for quite some time now. And I think as the Zerg player, you really want to get up that third base. If the Terran, if you're gonna let the Terran sit on two bases, you want to sit on three bases. So, and he hasn't been doing it for long enough. And here comes with a push. Vessels are out in the field now. And yeah, Ruby just going with a real standard tech here, just extremely standard, pushing with those tanks, waiting for those vessels, and just pushing out. And here he goes in, taking out lurkers. Those lurkers not doing enough damage there. I'm not sure what the upgrades are on those Marines, but if those Marines have the plus one armor upgrade, then uh, those Lurkers are going to be extremely ineffective, unless they themselves have an upgrade as well. And Iridate going off on that, mut those Mutalists, oh wow, there's, a, there's another Mutalist there with it, and it killed it, so not doing a very good split there, uh, Quanro. I think he was still controlling them, but he wasn't splitting them very well. So yeah, Lurkers are out in the field here, and they're going to try to loop around these forces, possibly catch um, any reinforcements, or just try to deny that third base from going up. Um, yeah, I think Quanro really needs to come out with some kind of uh, great play because at this point in time I really actually think that he's behind um, a bit too far for him to just play a standard game and try to get himself back into this one so uh, I think he's gonna have to get off some kind of nice surround or something like that and yeah there we see Ruby setting up his uh, third command center in a, an extremely weird position in my opinion but hey he's setting it up and he's getting ready to take that third down so um, if he does establish that then I do think that he's gonna be in a position to win this game entirely but we're gonna have to see what Quanro can accomplish here against these forces it's going to take real heroics for Quanro to delay until he can get his hive up and get swarm up. Um, he he produced so many mutilists and I think wasted a lot of money on those mutilists um, because the latter mutilists that he was producing really weren't effective at all. And now he's got to worry about his natural and his third. Doesn't really have very many units on the map at all to defend. Uh, he's got several lurkers, but aside from that, I think these siege tanks. Oh, they're just going to. I think it looks like he's. <laughs> Ruby's not even committing himself either way. Oh, but a flank coming in from 
from the back, this is what, what Frank was talking about, what Quan Ro needs to do. Uh, cleaning up a whole lot of Medic Marine and and almost all of the tanks, only one tank remaining, but it get, does get defensive Matrix, and Scourge coming out, and there's only two Marines to... Uh, the, um, the s both science vessels managed to survive, but the tank force is cleaned up. So that was a beautiful, beautiful flank um, coming in from Quanro. And I think um, if Ruby had been more decisive about where he was going, either the natural or the third, um, it, he might have been a bit more effective. But now the hive tech is up, and the, def the defiler mound is uh, undoubtedly going up. And uh, I think Quanro has managed to hold himself off. So. Um, as long as he doesn't lose in the next minute, I think he'll be in a, a, a decent position going into the latter game. Yeah, Ruby just was kind of in the middle of the third base in the natural, and that just opened up the possibility for this wicked-ass flank that Quano just took perfect advantage of, and now Ruby has this fairly dis big disadvantage. But now he's going to push out. The Filer will be out soon. Mine's getting no Zerglings. That was interesting. The Zerglings do get the mines before. Now, Zerglings die. That was five or six Zerglings died from a mine. But it's all good because Kwanro has this fairly solid defense of Lurkers right now. If he can keep them from getting irradiated, he'll be fine and be able to stall for Defilers. Two sides vessels getting down. Two left. And there we see the command center going down for Ruby. Finally landing from that really weird place. And I don't see why he just didn't put it at the 12 or the 11 or whatever that is. All the lurkers are dead, and now Quanro only has three sunken colonies, and I think he might be in a bit of trouble. Now, where where are Ruby's siege tanks? That would have worked a lot better if he had siege tanks, and now, at this point, he's just going to get flanked again. He's going to be forced right in here to the sunken colonies. He might actually keep going. No, I lied. He's going to die. Is he? No, I lied again. He's going to get in there somehow, some way. He found a way. Not enough lurkers, not enough zerglings, and no swarm, strangely enough. I thought it would be up by now, but I was wrong, and now Quano's natural expansion could be in a bit of trouble if Ruby decides to send down more m, &M. Now Storm's going up on a lurker egg, I believe that is. And at this point, Ruby's just getting flanked at this natural. He needs to stop kind of doing that. A drop's coming in now, and we'll see what it does. These Zerglings are spawning it, but I don't know if Quan is still defending his natural or something, but he should have more units right now. The one Marine going down, and the other Marine's dropping kind of behind it, so that other Marine draws the Zergling fire. I don't know if they're Cracklings yet. Are they Cracklings? Probably Cracklings, and I'm going to hand it off to Deja, because it feels like I've been talking forever, and another drop going on the 6 o'clock. Doing a little bit of a dual drop here, hitting the 6 o'clock position at the same time. Quanro's trying to redefine the theory of uh, defend with the least amount of units possible, and it was effective at first without wicked, wicked, wicked surround. Like, I don't even know if beautiful is good enough of an adjective to describe that surround on the first attack, but now we're seeing his lack of units and his lack of macro throughout the, uh, the mid-game.